Hi friends, what's up? This is RK from 360 Reader. Right now, I'm going to show how to enable disable app privacy report in iOS 15 on iPhone and iPad. For those unfamiliar, app privacy report is designed to provide users with the information on how often apps are accessing sensitive information provided to them through privacy permissions such as location, contacts, camera, microphone, and photo. Apple also displays network activity, letting you know which domains apps are contacting in the background. That all being said, let's learn how to turn on or off app privacy report in iOS 15 and iPadOS 15. Besides, I will also talk about how to get the most out of this privacy-centric feature. Before getting started, make sure you have subscribed our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss any update from 360 Reader. To get going, launch Settings app on your iPhone or iPad and then select Privacy. After that, you have to scroll down to the bottom and tap App Privacy Report and then you have to tap Turn off app privacy report and then confirm the action. That's pretty much it. So that's the way you can disable app privacy report in iOS 15 or iPad OS 15. Of course, if you ever want to get back this privacy centric feature, all you have to do is follow the same steps and then tap turn on app privacy report in the end. It's worth pointing out that if you already had record app activity enabled in the iOS 15 or iPad OS 15.1 updates, the app privacy report will be automatically on and it will already be populated with data. If you did not, you may need to use apps and websites for a few minutes before you start seeing the data. Do know that Apple shows data from the last 7 days and the app is split up into several sections to make it easier to get to what you want to know. First and foremost, I would like to talk about data and sensor access. In this section, Apple provides a list of apps that have accessed sensors and data granted to them through privacy permissions so your most sensitive information. It's worth noting that data and sensor access will tell you when apps have accessed the following data like contacts, location, photos, camera, microphone, media library. If you tap on an individual app and then tap on the permission that you want to view more about app, privacy report will give you a list of every time the app access the data in question. Next up, I would like to talk about app network activity. With app network activity, you can view a list of all of the different domains that your apps have contacted across the last seven days. This includes various internal domains used by apps, but it also lets you see what third-party websites and services are accessed, such as tracking or analytics tools. You can tap on any app in the list to see a random of all of the domains that have been contacted. If you have Instagram installed, for example, you will be able to see URLs for things like Double Clock, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager and more along with internal Instagram and Facebook URLs. At the bottom of each app's data, you can also get a list of the websites that you visited within the app. Next, it's time to talk about website network activity. Website network activity is basically identical to app network activity, but it shows you all of the domains contacted by the websites that you visited in Safari and other apps. This will show you all of the different trackers and analytics sites that websites are using. Finally, I would like to talk about most contacted domains. Most contacted domains is an aggregated list of the domains that apps have contacted most often and it is usually populated by various trackers and analytics domains. In this section, you can tap on 
any of the domains in the list to see which apps or websites used that particular domain. That's all there is to it. So that's the way you can use the app privacy report in iOS 15 or iPad OS 15 on your iPhone and iPad. Now that you know how it works, make the most of it to keep a track of the activity of apps that you are using on your iPhone or iPad. If you have found this video helpful, make sure to like and share it and I'll see you in the next video with most at handy tips and tricks. Till then, stay safe and have a great time. Bye-bye.